From the Opopco Studios in Oklahoma City, this is a Thunder Update brought to you by Bob Moore Ford. I'm Mike Sherman here with our Thunder beat writer Anthony Slater. And the Thunder's coming off a two-game home losing streak, Anthony. Twice blowing double-digit leads at home. First of all, uh, kind of taking the air steam out of the uh, New Year's Eve party, losing at home to the Portland Trailblazers. And then it happened again last night to the, uh, the Brooklyn Nets. What's going on with Oklahoma City? I mean, in very similar fashion, too. I mean, they're games they had in hand, games they should have won, games they were going to win, and then it's the fourth quarter collapse. A lot of it's what the opposing defense is kind of doing. I mean, we've talked about with Durant, and they're really pressuring him. They kind of have changed it up in the fourth there, you know, guarding him out to 30 feet. Nicholas Batum kind of, you know, really pressured him and was playing physical. In the Portland game, he missed a lot of shots. He went 0 for 5. Last night in the Nets game, the Nets were, I mean, Livingston played physical, but they were more, they were sending Garnett, and you know how, you know, kind of versatile Garnett is. He was out on the perimeter double. And uh, Durant just, every time he saw a double, he was passing it, and his teammates just kind of weren't coming through. They weren't making shots. They had seven turnovers in the fourth, which Scott Brooks mentioned today at practice. That's, you, they don't even like that many and a half, and they had seven and a quarter. So, I mean, that's just been the issue, and it, moving forward, because their defense has been so good, it's just about solving these offensive issues, especially down the stretch. Of course, the overarching problem right now for the Oklahoma City Thunder is Russell Westbrook's absence. Uh, not able to have someone there who can break down the defense quite the same way that Westbrook does. And Reggie Jackson's in that role now. And uh, against Portland, Reggie was sort of conspicuously absent when Portland went on a little lead, that about a three-minute uh, spurt that sort of evaporated the lead. Last night, he played a bunch. How's Reggie faring? Uh, there's still kind of some kind of chemistry issues, it seems, to where, you know, down the stretch he's dribbling and Durant's kind of wants the ball where he wants it, and Jackson's, you know, afraid to make a pass or, you know, he's doing it on his own. Sometimes he's waving off Durant. And you could tell there's just some – they just haven't been in these situations much – before together and, and there's been some issues Jackson hit a couple big shots but then he made a couple you know costly plays down the stretch I mean it's a work in progress he's 23 he's not Russell Westbrook and he just hasn't been in this situation much down the stretch with the ball in his hands and it's turned into some issues Darnell Mayberry in his Thunder Rumblings blog uh, that's on News OK right now it sort of paints a picture of a very solemn uh, atmosphere in the Thunder locker room after the game after the loss to the Nets Kevin Durant, not out of his normal routine. He's usually in the shower, ready to go when the writers get in. He's a few minutes, and then he, there he is. So I had him sitting at his uh, locker with a stat sheet in hand, still in uniform, still depressed, answering most questions like, I don't know. Reggie Jackson, normally a bubbling guy, normally a guy who is, uh, you know, kind of engaging, uh, down too. What's going on between those two, and what's, is there some chemistry issues right now? I don't think that, you know they're they're in between each other. I just think it's two games that this isn't a team that's used to losing. They lost the first game to Portland, and it wasn't that solemn locker room because it was like, yeah, we kind of blew a lead, but you know we've won you know 20 to 22, and they like they always say, we always come back after losses and we always play well. Then last night is a game against a Nets team that came in what like I think 10 and 21, you know, struggling unlike any team in the league right now basically, and they blew a big you know, fourth quarter lead to that team. That was not a game they were supposed to lose, and they knew that going in, and that's why I think, I mean, they were stunned in the locker room. The, the arena was stunned when Joe Johnson hit that shot. Anthony, uh, Scott Brooks, of course, uh, uh, has really guided this team's improvement steadily through the years. Every year, a better record. Every year, a better winning percentage. Uh, but he's always been criticized for his lack of flexibility with his rotations until this year. And now lately we're seeing a lot of difference. We're seeing Jeremy Lamb out there at the end of the games. We're, last night we saw Perry Jones. It's sort of like Scott Brooks is saying, okay, you asked for it, you got it. Here's some variety. Talk about Perry Jones out there last night late, and also talk about Scott Brooks' versatility and flexibility. Well, last night, I mean, a lot of it was with what the Nets were doing. I mean, they were going with Livingston and Darren Williams, two point guards. Then they were also going with Joe Johnson and Paul Pierce and Garnett. That was their starting lineup last night. That's two point guards, two two guards. I mean, you can maybe say Pierce is a three, but Pierce was playing the four, and then Garnett, who's usually a four, was playing the five. So they were going super small. It was their first time they've done it. It was kind of out of nowhere. It was Jason Kidd's, all, you know, like, let's, let's try to do something to get it going. And because of that, I mean, you had a Baca, Garden Pierce. It kind of neutralized. You didn't really want to play Nick Collison. It was just kind of a perfect storm to where this is the kind of game where Perry Jones, a real versatile type, you know, 6'11", but he's a three. 
it was a game for him to get a lot of minutes. And when he got those early minutes, he played well. He had three of his five threes. He's a pretty good defender. I mean, Paul Pierce scored on him late, but it was a perfect type game for Perry Jones. And that's that's what I think Scott Brooks has this year. He has guys like that, a utility guy to, to bring off the bench for certain matchups and certain times. And that's why you saw it last night. That's why you've seen it a lot this year. Oklahoma City Thunder still a half game out of first place for the lead in the Western Conference behind those Portland Trail Blazers. And of course the Thunder goes to Minnesota on Saturday mm -hmm. and then back in, in uh, Chesapeake Energy Arena against the Celtics. Yep. Talk a little bit about those two matchups. Kind of interesting for different reasons. Yeah, I mean, Minnesota, that's without Russell Westbrook, and they obviously will be without him tomorrow. They went in their second game of the season and got blown out. It was one of their worst games, you know, we've seen in a while. So that's kind of maybe a little bit of a redemption, and it'll kind of be a good test that have they grown. Have they grown from these last two games, and have they grown from early in the year where Minnesota just took it to them with the same lineup? And then back here Sunday, Jeff Green in town, Brad Stevens, kind of, you know, wonder boy Brad Stevens here. On a back, on a kind of strange back-to-back -back where you're, you know, at home on the back end of it. It'll just be an interesting game because the Celtics seem to stay in it every game despite their kind of talent discrepancy. So, two, two interesting games. A Thunder franchise with one of the best home court advantages in the NBA comes home Sunday off a two-game home losing streak. Something we haven't seen in Oklahoma City maybe ever. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks.